In this video, I am going to present you how to simulate a mathematical model which consists of ordinary differential equations using Python. So, this is modeling and simulation of a building heating system with mathematical modeling minds. This is the outline of this video. First, I am going to explain the problem to you and then I develop the mathematical model and finally implement that in Python to obtain the results. Define the problem. First we define the problem. Consider a building unit having a volume of 100 cubic meters. I am going to develop a heating model for the air inside this building unit using differential equations. And to make the model simple, I am going to make some assumptions. Consider the air as an ideal gas. Air is perfectly mixed. Kinetic and potential energies of air are negligible inside the building and no friction work. Further, in this model, I am not going to include the thermal mass of the building such as building envelope and furniture. Including them will reduce the simplicity of the model. The model will be developed for predicting the inside temperature of the building. I am going to include the heat losses associated with ventilation for this model. So I will start the modeling process with mass balance for the selected control volume. Mass of air inside the building is equal to the volume of the building Vb times the density of air rho b. In the same way we can write m dot in and m dot out as a relation in volumetric flow rate and density of air coming into the building and going out of the building. Note that rho out is equal to rho b because we assume perfectly mixed conditions. So I get my first order ordinary differential equation as d rho b over dt equals v dot in rho in minus v dot out rho out which is equal to rho b divided by v b. In this equation dependent variable is rho b. v b is a parameter which is the volume of the building and the rest are independent variables or inputs. Next I am going to apply the energy balance equation for the building unit. E b is the total energy of the control volume which consists of kinetic potential and internal energies. Airflow velocity inside the building unit has a small value. Therefore, kinetic energy is not taken into consideration. The potential energy of the system is also of minor importance here in this problem. So, only the internal energy term is taken into account. W dot is the rate of workflow and it is a combination of pressure work expansion work and friction work. As the volume of the building unit is fixed, expansion work is zero. Friction work is also close to zero because air is the fluid of interest. Pressure work or the flow work is the only term that is relevant in the energy transfer by work in this model and it is equal to PV dot in minus PV dot out. Q dot is the rate of heat flow from sources other than ventilation and it is equal to Q supply minus Q loss. There are numerous routes for adding heat into a building but in this problem we consider only an electrical heater for simplicity. The building envelope including walls, roof and floor together with the windows and doors are the main segments that permit the flow of heat to the outside resulting in heat losses from the building. I am going to use the three relations H equals U plus PV, PV equals NRT and DH equals MCPDT. And by taking that number of moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass, I develop the energy balance equation. And I have presented the meanings of different terms used in the energy balance equation development. Subscript B denotes the properties of the air inside the building. Subscript N 
represent the properties of inflow air and subscript out represents the properties of outflow air. This is our complete model and we have two differential equations to solve with two dependent variables air density and air temperature. In the energy balance equation there are some properties we need to compute. Rho in, H in, HB, CPB and capital M. They have to be calculated. We can read these values for dry air from property tables at specific temperature. But the issue is we need to calculate them for moist air. I'm not going to show them now. Instead, we can do the calculation when implementing the model in Python. Model implementation in Python. First, we import the NumPy library which is a Python library which supports arrays, matrices and which also contains high level mathematical functions. Then I import ODE int which integrates ordinary differential equations which is from the library SciPy. Finally, I import the matplotlib which supports Python visualizations. Then we move on to the model. Define the model with dependent variable y and independent variable time. Remember that y is an array because it has two components air density and air temperature. So we define them as y1 and y2. And next I am going to define the parameters and inputs. U is the overall heat transfer coefficient which is equal to 1. VB is the volume of the building, which is equal to 100 cubic meters. A is the inside surface area of the building. R is the gas constant, which is equal to 8.314. Vin is the volumetric flow rate of air coming into the building and it is equal to 1.2 cubic meters per hour per meter square of flow area of the building. And because of that, I have multiplied this by 25, which is equal to the floor area of the building. And I have assumed that volumetric flow rate of air coming into the building is equal to the volumetric flow rate of air going out of the building. I have specified the pressure, outside temperature and outside relative humidity as constants. In the model development section, I told you that we are going to calculate some properties within this Python code. So let's start doing that. First, we are going to calculate rho in. Rho in is the density of air coming into the building. These three equations show how to calculate rho in. But we need to estimate molar mass of moist air, molar fractions of water and dry air for incoming airflow stream. In order to do that, we need to estimate the saturation pressure of water. These seven p coefficients do that so that we can calculate rho in. Next, we move to calculate H in. H in is the specific enthalpy of moist air flowing into the building. It is given by these four equations. Here, X is the mass fraction of water. We take Cp dry air as a constant and Cp of water as a constant. And HFG is the latent heat of vaporization of water. With these details, we can calculate H in. Next, what we want to do is to calculate the specific enthalpy of moist air going out of the building. This is also equal to the specific enthalpy of moist air inside the building. In order to do that, I first calculate the mass fraction of water going out from the building, which is XO. 
XO can be calculated using a simple water balance equation. Then we can find H out. CPAR is also calculated using the given formula. Two other equations are given here which we need to use them in the differential equation. I define Q supply as 1000 watts which is from the electrical heater. Q losses are defined as UA delta T where delta T is equal to Y2 minus T out. Here Y2 is the inside temperature. After defining all the parameters and input variables within the function, now we can define the two differential equations. They are dy1 dt and dy2 dt. Then type return derivatives dy dt. Now we are ready to give initial conditions for dependent variables. I have assigned 1.2 kg per cubic meter for air density and 285 Kelvin for air temperature. Specify the time span. I'm going to simulate this for 1 hour and finally I'm solving these ODEs using ODE int function. So what I'm going to do now is to plot the results. I plotted both dependent variables in one graph. So this is how it looks like. Air temperature has increased from about 3 degrees in one hour and air density has also increased by a smaller amount. So this is the end of this video. If you like the content, give thumbs up and subscribe for the channel and press the bell icon for new video notifications. Thank you.